issues. Mm -hmm. So truly, not only in the islands, but in America and all over the world, the so-called Negro are living in squalor. Mm -hmm. And in and, and mass, we are doing very, very poorly. Mm -hmm. And it's something that most of us don't want to talk about, especially those of us who have, quote unquote, made it in this world or this society. Those of us who have been allowed in the past 20 to 50 years to receive a degree and who are now sharecropping on masses corporations as opposed mm -hmm. to the fields so and the plantations. So tell us how you feel about the plight of our people. Uh, and before you do that, let me read one scripture for you okay. to set this up. And it's in, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 61st chapter. Okay. And it certainly touches home the way I feel right now because my heart is heavy because of our people and what we're going through. Ch uh, Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of Yahweh Elohim is upon me because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the people. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives mm -hmm. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh mm -hmm. and the day of vengeance of our God mm -hmm. to comfort all that mourn. Mm -hmm. Certainly. America and all over the world needs their prison houses open today so that black males can go free. Mm -hmm. and, and all of us who are captives in a strange land, we, it's time for us to go free. So tell us how you feel about those statements. Well, uh, number one, it is time, it's almost time for our deliverance. Yahweh told Abraham we'd be here 400 years and uh, right around the turn of the century mm -hmm. we will be approaching that 400 years. But as far as our plight is concerned, our plight isn't anything that wasn't already prophesied. You know, while we were down in the Virgin Islands, uh, uh, once we did leave the resort and I took that walk into town and saw the conditions, I mean, it just dampened my whole spirit, you know, because when you look at the islands, you consider them to be kind of laid back and everything, you know, from what you, what you get on TV. Paradise. Right, but once you get there, you find out the paradise is for those who make it, and the ones that made paradise, uh, made the islands paradise is truly the Europeans. But basically, the reason why these things are coming upon us is because they were prophesied that they would happen because we wouldn't do, we would refuse to do what we're supposed to do. Now, it's just like, when, uh, let me read you a, a piece of scripture here out of uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 24 and you get an idea of, uh, of what I mean. Isaiah chapter 24 uh, and verse 1 says, Behold, Yahweh makes the earth empty and maketh it waste. He turneth upside down and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with the mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the take of interest, so with the give of interest to him. Mm -hmm. The land should be utterly empty and utterly spoiled, for Yahweh has spoken this, this word. The earth mourns and fade away, the world languishes and fade away, the hearty people of the earth do sigh. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, mm -hmm. changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Now, it's, and then it says, Therefore has the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. What has happened was, is that once we came into this captivity, and they gave us a little freedom, we decided we want to be like Master. We want to be like Mike. So whatever Master gave us, then that's what we went into, and we never took the time to do the research on those things. Mm -hmm. This is why a lot of us know uh, uh, that the Sabbath day, that the Europeans changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. A lot of people know that, mm -hmm. but they say, well, it doesn't make any difference. Well, if it doesn't make any difference, why, uh, why did God make the earth completely defiled? Because they had broken the covenant the of Sabbath. Covenant. Right, mm -hmm. see, this was the first thing that Yahweh blessed and sanctified. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that the Christians changed was the Sabbath. Well, they didn't change it. What they did was they decided they wanted to go to church on what they call Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. So they decided that this was going to be their holiday instead of the holiday that God had said. And what I buy people not doing the research, just going there because mother went there, father went there. It's a nice structure. Mm -hmm. They like the clothes, the preacher wear, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, we find that in doing so, what we what we do is we neglect to study ourselves, to show ourselves, to prove, and we allow we allow 
con men mm -hmm. to talk to us about the Word of God, but never really giving us the truth that's in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier that we, we, that the prophets told us about this 400-year mm -hmm. captivity mm -hmm. where we would be first in chains mm -hmm. and the, the cruel treatment that occurred during the Middle Passage mm -hmm. and, and the slave blo auction blocks here, mm -hmm. the slave period, and then right after that came the, uh, the period of emancipation, so-called, where blacks didn't know what to do, didn't understand how to do anything. And as you stated, we once again took on the master's ways. Right. You know, if they had a Methodist church, we added the A to that and made it African Methodist right. church. So uh, we followed, we copied, we followed suit. Mm -hmm. But the reason we were in this captivity is because this is what our forefathers did too, and that's why we're here. Of course. So. So Israel, as a, a race of people, wouldn't you say has always been a stiff-necked, hard-headed, and rebellious house? Like you always said, from the time that he brought us up out, out of Egypt, he said, man, this is a stiff-necked people. Mo, he told, told Moses, say, get out the way so I can consume these people all at once and make you a great nation. But Moses inter interceded, and uh, Yahweh uh, saved the people again. But uh, all through the annals of history, we find that regardless to how many pe uh, prophets that Yahweh sent to our people, our people loved the ways of strangers. So what we had the tendency to do was grab on to what the strangers are, 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 are deal with. And this is what has put us in a position where we don't talk about culture anymore, mm -hmm. simply because we have no culture, because we are following the ways of everybody else. And uh, 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 their culture, uh, the things that they do, I mean, just like take things like St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. They come in, they paint the streets, right? People be dancing in their little green and white costumes, mm -hmm. right? It's a part Dial of their culture. Water right. Green. It's a part of the culture of the Irish that the, the Ameri rituals. right the mm -hmm. rituals that has been adopted here in America. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to us, see, no one get anything from us. We get everything from everybody else and then we deal with it the way that we uh, want to deal with it. Not necessarily going and do the research. We just take it and whatever pleases us, that's what we deal mm -hmm. with. And the scriptures plainly tell us that, that the curses have fallen upon us, and they're still upon us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we die at alarming rates over everything, mm -hmm. over those of the nations, because those righteous laws that, and ordinances that you spoke about mm -hmm. were given to us. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we didn't keep it, just like we do our children, Yahweh has punished us, mm -hmm. and it's truly been severe. Mm -hmm. Let me share with you an article, and it's entitled, U.S. Imprisoning the Poor. Prisons in the free world are full to the bursting point. Fullest of all are U.S. jails. Over the past 20 years, exacerbated by ever-increasing inequalities, preoccupation with the virtues of law and mm -hmm. order has mm -hmm. led to a toughening of penalties. Mm -hmm. Worst hit have been those excluded from the American dream. Mm -hmm. The U.S. is constantly tightening its social welfare budget, but its generosity knows no bounds when it comes to controlling and incarcerating those whom it has desired neither to educate and care for nor provide with housing mm -hmm. and an adequate diet mm -hmm. and education. Mm -hmm. that, that's alarming to me. What this is saying is that in the past 20 years, the prison system has risen to bursting out of the scenes. Mm -hmm. The prison system is now connected to corporations, and that is the way that they are housing our black men. Of course, and what they're headed for with that is free labor. Exactly. See, uh, the chains, do, uh, uh, doing slavery, the chains weren't on because the, the slaves had to work. Mm -hmm. But once the Emancipation Pro Proclamation was signed in the Kansas, Nebraska Act that mm -hmm. uh, uh, prevented slavery in the new territories that they had because they were just buying the Louisiana Purchase. Right. Uh, so the Kansas, Nebraska Act was signed to keep slavery from going in, 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 into that area. But then the change came on during the sharecropping area mm -hmm. because black people, they, they tried that and they got gypped out of their money year after year, so they started to leave in mass. Uh, leave the South and mass going to the North. I remember when I was a kid, we used to come down uh, 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 to the South, and you pass through the Mississippi Delta, mm -hmm. there was always a lot of people out, you know, chopping cotton or whatever they were doing, you know, out different fields working, and we blow the horn and they'd wave and so forth and so on. But when you go down through there now, what you see is combines doing that work, mm -hmm. simply because they couldn't main, keep the slaves, the ex-slaves, on the plantation. but. The thing of it is, is this, we receive, you know, 
uh, I, I was I was just thinking about what's going over over in Albania. Mm -hmm. Now they're talking about the ethnic cleansing that's going on in Albania, right? Look at the things that's happened to our people here, right here in America, and no one has said a word. Exactly. But it's, it's, it's the reason for that. It's because these things were prophesied. Mm -hmm. Just like Yahweh told our people in uh, 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 Deuteronomy 28 chapter that he was going to put us in a nation that our fathers didn't know mm -hmm. of. And there were we going to serve gods of wood and stone day and night. Mm -hmm. Gods that came up newly. And when we check the religions, that's on the earth today, mm -hmm. we find out that these gods really are new because the religions that we practice today, 90% of them are less than 500 years old and they were all started by people that was not of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, people say that they're followers of Christ. Well, Christ kept God's law. Exactly. Even the apostles in the New Testament kept God's law. And but they uh, but because Paul said we're not under the law, we're under grace. Then what what I, what what the adversary, the devil, told his children was this: Well, see what Paul said. You're not under the law, we're under grace. But they didn't never go back and find out what law. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine living in any system that didn't have any law structure? Just take the city of Atlanta, for instance. If we didn't have a governmental system with the police force and everything, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to get in this city. Law is very important. And we're going to be judged by these things. And to show you that we're going to be judged by these things, Yahweh destroyed our whole nation, put us in captivity under all the kingdoms of the earth simply because we wouldn't follow his law. Now, if this thing has happened to us, mm -hmm. what do you think is going to happen to the nation? Because Yahweh said, I'm going to put you in captivity under a cruel Lord, mm -hmm. but don't you learn his ways. And whosoever touch you, touch the apple of my eye, mm -hmm. I will recompense it. Well, we got history books to show that the nations, especially America, who is going to be destroyed by Russia, uh, uh, she's, in, she's, she's getting to be in dire straits. Mm -hmm. And once this come upon America, just before it happens, we have got to get out of here. And only the strong is going to get out of here. What I mean by strong, I don't mean the mighty men like this. What I mean is the people that have the spirit of the true and living God. That's, that's something that um, our people refuse to hear and mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. They refuse to go back and actually read the words that were written in this book from the beginning to the end and not look at verses and phrases. It's a, it's a complete diary, actually, of what happened to our race mm -hmm. and how we came in contact with the, with the other nations and why we had to come in contact with the other nations. Had we kept this law, we would still be on top because that was the blessing, that we would be the head and not the tail. Of and course. all the nations would come to us for their wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Mm -hmm. They would buy, they would take from us, buy from us, and we would not uh, buy from them. Mm -hmm. But now we're, the, we're on the bottom of the totem pole and we're getting everything, all of our sustenance comes from the nations. But Israel refused to think about that because we don't even really want to even deal with the fact that we are still captives in a strange land, which we know we are. Um, it's truly sad because when you do talk about the New Testament and you talk about Yahshua and they claim that he was a Christian and then they'll say, well, I'm a, J I'm a Baptist. And I'm like, but John baptized, but he was a Jew right. and he kept the law. Right. So you have to go back and research the history of the Baptist and see if it's in any way connected to mm -hmm. John or Yohan and the Baptist mm -hmm. who baptized the children of Israel in the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. And for what reason? To repent from the things that they had done contrary to what was written down in the law. Of course, of course. And listen to this. This is in Isaiah uh, uh, 42 and it's right in line uh, with what you said. So I did, uh, Isaiah 42 and uh, verse 18 it says, Hear ye thee, and look ye blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, a thief as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as Yahweh's servant? Seeing many things, you observing not. Opening the ear, but you hear it not. Mm -hmm. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Mm -hmm. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, hmm. and they are hid in prison houses. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I pray, and none uh, delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. restore. Mm -hmm. You're you absolutely see. right. And these things came upon us because of the fact that uh, uh, he said in verse 24, Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not Yahweh, he against whom we have sinned? For they were not walking his ways, neither were they obedient to his law. Therefore, he has poured upon Israel the 
fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and he had set him on fire round about, yet he knew it not, and it burned him, yet, yet he, he laid not it consider. not to heart. Mm -hmm. We don't wonder why we're on the bottom. We don't wonder why the religions we practice we get from other nations. Mm -hmm. We don't wonder why our children are, 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 are in the condition they're yeah. in today. Mm -hmm. But see, if we had ministers that would go back and take that spiritual journey all through history, mm -hmm. and it's the, the, uh, the 6,000 years of history, mm -hmm. and cover everything that Yahweh had to say to who about what, then we wouldn't have the things going on mm -hmm. today. We wouldn't have the big churches, Christian churches we have today. But Satan was given 6,000 years, and Yahweh has to get him some glory, just like he did on Egypt and all the other empires that came up. So this is basically another reason why he's allowed us to stay in his captivity for so long. Well, Elder, maybe they'll hear these facts. Since they won't hear the scriptures, let's, let's give them the statistics. And they can go on the web and on any newspaper and look this up. There's something happening. Mm -hmm. There's something definitely in the wind. Of course. We are hated by the nations. Of course. And they show it to us each and every day on satellite TV, mm -hmm. on CNN News. It's shown that even though we have nothing and we're on the bottom, we're still hated. Of course. Listen to this. In California, not so long ago, the national champion of education and public health, but now a believer in prison across the board, the number of prisoners held in its state jails alone rose from 17,000 in 1975 to 48,000 in 1985, mm. and by 1995 had passed the 130,000 mark. Wow. And I'd be willing to bet that now in 1999, it's probably over 250,000. That's of just course. in the, the jails of California alone. Mm -hmm. If we add to that the number of prisoners held in the county jails, Los Angeles alone holds 20,000 prisoners. The total is a staggering 200,000 prisoners. Mm. This was 1995 mm -hmm. figures though. Mm -hmm. We have a problem. Those of us who have not received education, those of us who have been privileged to live in the inner cities or want to go and visit the inner cities mm -hmm. to partake in drugs that the CIA and the government of the United States has brought into our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. the, the same government that allowed our corporations to move into Mexico and to move into uh, overseas so that it's now a global market. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there are no productions of televisions anymore in America or cars like there was with our, in our father's mm -hmm. time. So there are no blue collar jobs left. It's either you're, you have a degree and you're up here or you're doing minimal labor at McDonald's. Of course. And our little brothers don't want to hear that. Of course. Especially if they're bringing drugs and they're flashing <coughs> 13, 14, 1500 dollars every two, three days at them just so they can catch them up to throw them in prison. Mm -hmm. And they're falling for it. Of course. We'll our see. radio stations, our, our producers of music, what are they allowing to be produced? Thug life. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you got yours, get it. It's yours to take. Do it now. Right. Whatever it takes, drugs, killing, stealing, lying, do it. Well, you know, before the Civil Rights Movement, before we decided we were going to be equal, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, before we decided that, uh, we had economic bases in our neighborhood that would employ our young men when they came out of school and so forth, and they had jobs to where they, they, they could depend on, on a job. Okay, but now with the thousands of students that's coming out of school now, there's not enough jobs for them. Hmm. And they, <clears throat> they've gotten this education and they want it. They want Miss American Pie, uh, not understanding that most Americans haven't attained to Miss American Pie. But it's getting to the place now to where survival is going to be the key. Let me read something to you that, that, that the Messiah had to say, uh, Yeshua had to say in St. Matthew 24. <coughs> uh, this is in uh, verse, uh, St. Matthew 24 and verse 7. It says, If a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there should be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All of these are the beginning of sorrow, mm -hmm. the opening of the seals in Revelation 6 chapter, right? Okay, uh, and verse 10 says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and hate one another. You notice how people are, are treating each other uh, in these days and times? Mm -hmm. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's basically what's happening. What is uh, iniquity? 
what sin? <laughs> Iniquity is sin. And that's basically what's happening. Our young men and are coming. And what is sin? Sin is transgression of God's law. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, many of our young people are coming out of schools today, and they haven't got, uh, 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 they really don't see any hope. They can't see beyond the horizon. And this is what's turning them into the people that they are becoming. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're disrespecting everybody, right? And they're after that fast money because that's the only, only thing they can do is get that money. And all, it's a, it, it, it boils down to survival. That's right. And they're surviving right. the best way that they can because uh, that the system has mm -hmm. already turned against them. I mean, a few years ago, when it first started, they started with that uh, 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 female liberation, right? Females are already liberated, you know, but they started pushing that. Then they started pushing child abuse, right? And then they let the education, they let the children take over the schools and let the That's education right. system slip down the tubes because mm -hmm. they knew that they were going to pass laws that would get these kids out of school. And this is what they're doing. They're turning them out of school every day for little infraction, simply because the education system can't babysit for them anymore. The parents are complaining, but what is really happening is this. The curse is just coming upon our people. This is what, remember uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah said, you're going to be an infamy of the people? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what we have to be. We have to be in the, in the sight of all the nations as something that's totally unwanted, and it's getting like that. And one, but once you get to that point, this is when the whole thing will start to come to a head. To a head. But see, Israel, our people, First of all, we don't see the, dis the conspiracy because we're too busy within our own lives being mm -hmm. consumed day to day. Mm -hmm. But we don't see the, all the nations coming together for a common cause, which is to destroy the, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. They know what our destiny is. Of course. We don't know who we are, and they have quite successfully hidden that from us. Mm -hmm. But we've always had things to show us who we are. We've always loved the Word. We've always loved the Most High. We've always sang and danced to, uh, to the Most High. Mm -hmm. We've shown, that's why they called us soul people, right. soul children. Mm -hmm. But that's all we had was that innermost being. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of who we are have been successfully erased, and that's because the Most High said, I'm going to make you proverbs and bywords. You're, you're going to cease from being a nation mm -hmm. before me. And therefore, we don't understand that's the reason we're being consumed because they know that the so-called Negro all over the earth are destined to control this world in a peaceful and righteous society mm -hmm. where we will once again be the head and they will be under our rule and command. That's right. something they don't want to think about. Right. We are the small nation from the east that's going to rise and uh, a rule of earth that has been prophesied by many religions, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so-called holy men, that a small nation from the east was going to rise and rule the earth. We're on the bottom now. Mm -hmm. But then when we were in Egypt, we were on the bottom. And we began, uh, what did it say in, uh, in, in the Exodus? The children of Israel, when we went down in Egypt, wasn't but 70 people in our whole nation. Mm -hmm. And we began to multiply, and the whole land was filled with us, right? And that's when the, the Pharaoh said, come let's on, man, wiser. let's deal wisely with these folks. Because they, they began to multiply to this is what they've done today. here today. And they started it with what's happening to the black male. Mm -hmm. The black male has become endangered an extinct. Species. Right, he's an endangered species. Right. Well, if you kill the head, we know what happens to the seed, exactly. you see. And this, is, uh, this was all designed to make, to put that negativism mm -hmm. into our young men's mind mm -hmm. that they never could be anything. Well, what do you expect? You're captive, see, that's the problem. No one has let them know that they're captives, and this is what's deceiving them. We're going to go to the Around the World Report. Be right back. Hi, I'm David Geis, and this is the Signs of the Times Around the World Report. Tonight's top story, gratuitous violence, the final frontier. Just as Rome was numb from wars on its borders, so a weary America fights wars on the outer edges of her empire. And just like in Rome, inflation is now on the horizon. From our public elementary, middle, and high schools, the path to infamy is now clear. It goes like this. Some kids got a plot to plant a bomb or to shoot some other kids. And if you tell, you'll be on the hit list. It may not seem funny to you, but it's pure adrenaline to a fourth grader. 
U.S. First Lady Hillary Clinton apparently wants to be the leader of the world. She is planning a trip to Israel this June to try and bolster her image among Jewish voters in New York. Mrs. Clinton blatantly ignored Israel during her last Middle East tour. The entire Middle East is buzzing with the aftershocks of the election of Ehud Barak as Israel's new prime minister. Various Arab nations are forming alliances and tr signing trade pacts. Syria and Jordan solidified several economic oil deals in the past few weeks. PLO Authority Chief Yasser Arafat is expected to meet in Damascus with Syrian dictator Hafez al-Assad in the near future. The stated purpose of the meeting is to rebuild, something heads of states do. There was a confrontation at the Western Wall between ultra-Orthodox and Reformed Jews, apparently incensed that the Reformed Jews had men and women praying together. The ultra-Orthodox hurled bottles, trash, and insults at them. The Reformed Jews, who are much more liberal, have been struggling to take over the establishment. The Orthodox, however, are a force to be reckoned with. Their voice went from 14 to 22 seats in the 120-seat Israeli parliament in these last elections. More about the ultra-Orthodox, they had a confrontation with some Arabs when the Arabs parked their cars in a conservative Jewish neighborhood on the Sabbath day. This election of Ehud Barak is a fundamental shift back toward the Dove-style diplomacy of Yitzhak Rabin and Shimon Peres. In fact, last week Peres declared that a Palestinian state would be good for Israel. Barak is also actively freezing new Israeli settlements with the pa which the Palestinians have stated is a must for the peace process to resume. Meanwhile, from Bethlehem to Gaza to Jerusalem, Israelis and Palestinians continue to clash. The ultra-Orthodox party is apparently now willing to concede the Golan Heights to Syria in exchange for a peace treaty. Now here's Ruth Israel with the community update. Ruth? Thank you, David. Hi, I'm Ruth Israel. Tonight's top national news is Congressman Bob Barr under attack by the Magical Cauldron, an Atlanta-based national network of witches and pagans. After reading a newspaper report about a Wiccan celebration at Fort Hood Army Base in Texas, Barr sent a letter to the commanding officer asking that Fort Hood stop the, the nonsense, unquote. Barr is also quoted as saying, in my opinion, your policy of encouraging the practice of witchcraft at Fort Hood is based, at best, on a severely strained interpretation of the First Amendment's first exercise clause, free exercise clause. The matter of the fact is, and witches won't like this, our country was founded on a basic belief in God, unquote. Barr said he was, has not decided his next move on the matter, but he plans to pursue the issue. Several of Metro Atlanta's leading witches are trying to arrange meetings with Congressman Barr. Seems we don't have to look far. Everything is right at our back door. And on the local home front, Greek Orthodox Bishop, Bishop crowned, surrounded by Mosaic apostles and saints and their Jesus looking down from a dome overhead, Atlanta's new Greek Orthodox Bishop Alexios took his throne. My beloved fellow bishop, you are entrusted with the very authority that the Lord Jesus Christ entrusted with the very to his apostles, quoted Archbishop Cyridon, head of the Greek Orthodox of America, who presided over the installation. Both Atlanta Mayor Bill Campbell and DeKalb County CEO Leanne Levington declared Saturday, the same holy day ordained by Yahweh as a day of honor to Alexios in their respective jurisdictions. Wonders never cease. And finally, United States government panel endorses embryo research. A panel appointed by a presidential committee had recommended and approved funding for research on human embryos saying the moral cost of destroying embryos in research is outweighed by the social good that, come, that could come from the work. Scientists have determined that human embryo cells have the potential to grow into replacement tissues to treat a wide variety of chronic diseases. The recommendations go further than those proposed by the National Institutes of Health. Those call for federally funded research on laboratory grown human embryo cells, but not on human embryos themselves. 
fancy way of putting it, but it means the same thing. That's the community o update. Back to you, David. Thanks, Ruth. Mm -hmm. A court has found in favor of several Catholic families that sued the Bedford School District for religious violations in the classroom. The violations include holding an Earth Day liturgy, encouraging the use of worry dolls, and having third graders make paper images of a Hindu elephant god. The family's lawsuit charged that the district promoted Satanism, the occult, and New Age religion. The German Chancellor is angering Great Britain by telling them the truth, that a European army will inevitably be formed and British soldiers will someday, very soon, be European soldiers. This Kosovo thing is the last straw. A world army is coming. Catholics and Lutherans have reached a historic agreement on the theological subject of justification. They now agree for the first time that salvation comes by grace alone and works follow from that. The resolution of this man-made false dichotomy that has claimed so many lives in the last 500 years is a major step toward world church unification. And finally, a team of mad scientists has created a computer made from the neurons of leeches that may begin a new generation of computers that can learn the leechulator can perform simple sums and its creators are optimistic that the technology will pave the way for computers that can think on their own. That's been the Around the World Report for tonight. Now back to our regular program. Shalom and welcome back to Signs of the Times. I'm your hostess, Tamar Israel, and tonight with me is the Elder Priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, the Elder Yaakov Ben Israel. Thank you for joining us back. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to say something, you know. Well, uh, you know, uh, when we get off into, basically off into the religions, we notice today that uh, Christianity is the largest religion on the earth. But let me show you what Paul, you put me on the spot then. <laughs> let me I'm show only you what joking, actually. Let me show you what Paul had to say in the in the, in the New Testament in, in the book of Romans. He Tell said, you what, Elder, hold that point and let me give the audience our telephone number so that they can call us if they'd like to interact with you this last half hour. Okay. The telephone number is seven seven zero five five nine two nine nine nine. That's seven seven zero five five nine two nine nine nine. And I think we have a caller already. Okay, go ahead. Caller, thank you for joining us tonight. Go ahead, please. Yes, my name is uh, Mr. Muhammad, and I represent the Nation of Islam. Okay. And I see, I see a lot of similarities uh, as far as what uh, our connection with one another. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because what you stated about the penal system and what the brother stated as far as the, uh, uh, the, the, the Bible talks about how the black man will, will be incarcerated and will be destroyed, when it when it says it talks about how uh, um, uh, Pharaoh talks about let us deal wisely with them, so I get basically what I'm saying is is that is that a connection with what you said about the, uh, the the men being penalized in California, and what the elder said as far as, as uh, 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 we uh, the, the the black man going down as as far as uh, Pharaoh saying uh, let us deal wisely with them. And most definitely that's the conspiracy in the past 20 to 30 years as I've stated men have no place to go even with a degree very very rarely so where do they go they go to prisons they go to to the grave or they're out in the streets homeless so it's certainly a conspiracy just as it was in Egypt but we're, we're living in Egypt all over again. The spirit of Egypt is all over America. All you have to do is open your eyes and look around you, and you'll see the pyramids, the phallic symbols, the, the gods and goddesses. Uh, so nothing has changed, it's just the taskmasters have changed. And in terms of the similarity between what we're saying and the Nation of Islam, 
Well, Elijah Muhammad took the, pl the plight of the black man directly from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And had we stayed with our history, which is the, uh, the history of the Hebrew Israelites, and not gone into dealing with other people's cultures like Islam, we would understand that purely from the biblical story. That's our history book. We don't have to deal with the Quran or any other doctrine of the other nations or the symbols of the other nations. Our history is right here before us and we don't have to add to it or take away from it, which is all that Islam and Christianity has done. They, they came about as a result of the Hebrew scriptures, mm -hmm. as a result of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And so all of their religion and their doctrine is based on the history of our people. So why not turn back to the source and not deal with things that came up lately? Well, you know, uh, another thing about that, too, you know, uh, I hear a lot of brothers, we, we refer to each other uh, as the black man, the black man. But see, now they're tying up two black nations of people into one. Mm -hmm. The Hebrews were black and the, so Africans were the Africans were black, but they were two different seeds. Right. The Hebrews did not come out of the seed of Ham. The Hebrews came out of the seed of Shem. Mm -hmm. So when we, this is another deception that is that's, that's put upon us that we that we perpetuate by calling each other black man now and I you know uh, uh, you have to understand that there are two black races here on earth just as there are two white races on earth look at your so-called Jews and your Europeans but they're two different seeds exactly. right and look at us and look at your African there was two different seeds when Moses killed that Egyptian and left Egypt and went around the Arabs. Mm -hmm. Didn't they think he was an Egyptian? They sure did. Why? Not because of his dress, because it took him more than 11 days to get through that jungle he went through, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that wilderness, but because of his color. Mm -hmm. The same thing with the Messiah. When the Messiah was born, they told him, say, look, take the hide child in down Egypt. in Egypt and hide. Right. Well, see, they went down and hid among the Ethiopians down in Egypt until uh, uh, Herod was dead and then they brought him back because they couldn't find him down there with all those black folks. So what this did, as a matter of fact, when you read the, the, the narrative of the Bible, you're going to find out that every time Yahweh brought a nation upon our nation to chasten us for not doing what he said, we were, many of us would go down in Egypt and hide until that crisis was over and then some of us would come back in the land and some of us wouldn't until uh, between 70 and 100 A.D. when we were totally uh, banned from the land. Well, we still have. I mean, they, they took us from Africa, and that's the whole, the, the, the myth is so deep and so deceptive till because we came from the west coast of Africa, which is where they rounded up their slaves to sell to the Europeans for the transatlantic voyage, because that's where the, the holding pens were, the prisons waiting the next shipload, mm -hmm. uh, that we thought we were Africans. So we call ourselves African Americans, whereas the Africans and the Arabs sold us to the Europeans. Of course. So even though the Arabs are closer to us by race and lineage, because we're all of Abraham's seed, that does not mean that we're, uh, we're, we're the same people. Of course We're not. different people. We don't need to go and deal with the Arabs' culture of Islam. We don't need to deal with the African cultures or the European cultures. Let's stay with the biblical story. It's the Hebrew culture. And we prove that by singing those songs called Negro Spirituals mm -hmm. about going back over the River Jordan one of these days. Elder, we have a caller on the line. Caller, thanks for holding. Go ahead, please. Hi. Hi. My name is Shannon Davis. Yes. And um, I, I noticed I look at this y'all program, uh, Sign of Time. Okay. Um, question I want to ask is, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Baptist, and I noticed that my 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 main concern is the Y2K. I know this is totally different program, but a lot of time people they have issues about the Y2K because man have turned his back on God, and we got everything computer wise. I want, can you answer that about the Y2K, the year 2000 coming up, as far as us black people don't understand what's going on in the world now? Well, I'll put it to you Thank this you. way. Y2K isn't what you need to worry about. What you need to worry about is, uh, is how to find out what your creator's name is. His name <laughs> is not God. Uh, uh, Y2K, he always going to take care of his people. He always have taken care of his people, and he's still going to take care of his people. So as far as Y2K is concerned, I'm not really concerned uh, 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 about that Y2K thing. What I'm basically concerned about is this. Our people finding salvation through their own roots, 
because we're going to have to go back to our own roots. If you don't know what your past was all about and what the prophets had to say pertaining to your past, then what? this is why we get caught up into being Baptist and Methodist and Seventh-day Adventist and so forth because we don't take the time to go to the encyclopedia and look up these things that we practice and find out that the religions that we are practice are man-made and they're less than 500 years old. Mm -hmm. And they taught, and what happened was they taught religion out of a history book. But let me read something to you all uh, out of uh, here about the Jews. Uh, I'm in uh, uh, Romans chapter 2 and uh, verse 28. It says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh. But he is the Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is not of uh, men but of God. What advantage then has the Jew? Now, Paul letting you know that the Jews have an advantage, right? Mm -hmm. Now, according to the Christians, they don't. But it says, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit in there is being circumcised? Now, folks, Tracy, we have to have that circumcision no more, right? Correct. Much every way, chiefly because unto them were committed the oracle of God. Mm -hmm. So what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let every man, let God be true, but let every man be a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your sins and overcome when you're judged. So what happens is this. We get off into these, re these religions and practice these little uh, 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 rituals that they practice. But what we don't do is go, out, go back into history and, uh, and, and study the religion itself, its origin. Why was it brought about? Who brought it about? Now, why should I believe what somebody else said? Why can't I go back to the source? Why do they teach me religion out of a history book? Right. It's just like uh, the brother just said, well, I'm a Baptist. And I mentioned earlier, well, John the Baptist was a Jew. Mm -hmm. So you need to go back to what John was and Paul and Peter and, and Christ himself. They were Jews. Right. They and were, they were our people. They were called Christians by the Europeans. Exactly. Well, they, we they, have another caller. They, they got some strange names for us today, and it's not Christian That's stories. right. Right. Okay. <laughs> caller, thanks so much for holding. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to ask the elder about this integration. That's a, that's a big thing that bothers me. Okay. Uh, you know, you take about, before integration, about 35 years ago, all of our kids, they could talk, they could speak, they could think, and they, they were just decent, average, basically average children. And then when integration came into effect, most of them seemed to be, you know, like living on another planet or something and fantasizing and tripping. And I just think that integration just did a terrible thing to our children. And, uh, you know, if you if you go over to uh, Israel, you know the Is the Israelis and the Palestinians who are having the same practical problem that uh, we and and uh, the Europeans here were having. This is prior to integration. Those Palestinians wouldn't think of integrating their children into Israel and give Israel power over them to handle them and mistreat them and to miseducate them and and to just rule over them in any way possible and, and to drive them basically crazy. And that's what I think uh, integration has done to our children. But our leaders, they don't want to deal with that because, believe it or not, I think they are being paid. Well, based, they aren't being paid, my brother. What ha what actually happened was that uh, the people stopped pushing, so the leaders didn't have anything to, uh, uh, anything to fight for. So they went and did the best thing that they had that they could do, being politicians. But when you when you talk about the Palestinians, what uh, you know about the things they do, I tell you another thing too. The Palestinians wouldn't dare uh, 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 mix and mingle with us either, just like the Israelis won't. Because understand one thing. Israel is Palestine, right? We're the Palestinians, right? Okay, the people over there are saying that they're the Jews. Now, the Palestinians are saying that they're the, the Israelites, right? And the house of uh, 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 the Israelis is Israel. saying that they're the house of Judah, mm -hmm. right? So as far as we're concerned, my main thing is this. As far as that mixing and mingling and so forth together, Yahweh told you, say, don't sow mingle seed together. 
Don't uh, uh, let your cattle mix with diverse kinds. Mm -hmm. Don't take uh, among the nations. Don't you give them your sons, and don't you take your daughters in, in, into us. As a matter of fact, we weren't even supposed to marry from tribe to tribe. Mm -hmm. But see, once we got over here in Miss American Pie. And once we got a little freedom, then what we decided to do was that we were going to do, we were going to learn the ways of strangers. And he told us in Jeremiah 10, say, my son, learn not the ways of, of the heathen because they're vain. That's right. And what we do, we have a tendency to get caught up in these things. And once we begin, in, especially in those mixed marriages, mm -hmm. once we get into mixed marriages, uh, we want to show how liberal we are, mm -hmm. how we are so well-rounded and so forth, how we can accept everything. I can't accept that. Mm -hmm. I can't accept that. I mean, I have friends that's Europeans, but that don't mean that I want him living next door to me. Mm -hmm. And he definitely ain't going to date my daughter. If he do, I'm killing both of them. <laughs> you see, so because Yahweh told us, say, look, don't make no covenants with the people of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Look at the Constitution of the United States. According to the Constitution of the United States, <coughs> excuse me, they referred to the citizen. Mm -hmm. We weren't considered citizens. We were cons we were slaves, right? So when you look at when you look at those things, you can very well see that why should I want to be like someone whose whole uh, 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 life is about challenge <laughs> and greed and gain mm -hmm. and putting me down? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. We have another call on the line. Caller, thanks so much for holding tonight. Go ahead, please. Do we have that caller? Do we have a caller on the line? Okay. Elder, listen to this. This is taken from uh, a website, and the title of the article is called Narco Terror and the National Security State. And this is written by an ex DEA agent. Listen to what he says. It says, Today, as during the 1980s, Anti-black racism fuel Washington's phony war on drugs. Mm -hmm. The gross sentencing disparities among blacks and whites, blacks for crack and white for cocaine, dealers under the liberal Clinton administration is but the leading edge of a generalized campaign to demonize and control the black population. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imperialism and its clone narco-capitalism in its typically racist fascist deals with surplus populations by traditional means, meaning naked repression and police violence. Mm -hmm. And we see that today. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share with you what uh, the difference is, or what they call justice by race. The number of prisoners per 100,000 adults. In 1985, blacks equaled 3,544 to whites 528. Mm -hmm. In 1990, 5,365, that's per 100,000 people now. Mm -hmm. Blacks, 5,365 compared to whites, 718. Mm -hmm. In 1995, blacks were incarcerated 6,926 times over whites, 919 times. Mm -hmm. But their children are using the drugs too. Mm -hmm. Their children are out there doing their evils too, mm -hmm. but guess what? They're not getting thrown in the prisons. They send them the nice resorts to straighten up and, and cool out and come on back into society. Right. But it's all because, as the, the gentleman just said, we have no education. We have no teachers in our own communities that uh, love to teach and want to make sure that our children do grow up to be citizens, good citizens of this country, to learn how to speak, to learn how to do the reading, writing, and arithmetic. We don't have that anymore. We, we did search for the wrong things in the 60s, and mm -hmm. the result of it is, has meant that we've lost our communalism, and we've lost everything that was about our race, the mm -hmm. closeness of our race. Mm -hmm. And now that we've spread out everywhere, the more we run to them, the more they run from us mm -hmm. and let us know that they still hate us to mm -hmm. this day. Well, Elder, you know, I, we have a few minutes left, and I'd like for you to share with the audience where they can reach you, your address and telephone number. And go ahead and let them know uh, where they we can are reach locate, you. Uh, we are the uh, uh, New Covenant Congregation of Israel, uh, the Cultural Center of NCCI. We are located at 3901A Covington Highway in Decatur, Georgia, mm -hmm. and we have uh, classes on uh, Saturday at 1, Tuesday night at 8, uh, Sunday morning at 10.30 and a sister's class on uh, Thursday night at 8 p.m. And we ask everybody to bring a tablet, a pencil, a Bible, and a small cassette tape recorder with two 90-minute tapes. And if you can, drag your preacher along, seeing that you're paying him your money. <laughs> 
All right, thanks so much, Elder. I'd like to share with you this one last comment and facts about uh, what we're going through as a people. It says, on the home front, the crack plague created by imperialism led to the destruction of tens of thousands of lives. The virtual occupation of the black community by an army of cops and a prison population swelled by poor youth convicted of petty crimes. The racist mythology of the black gangster fused with other demons of settler colonial psychopathology. The levels of prison wards have busted at the seams, mm -hmm. and it's terribly a shame. Mm -hmm. But Elder, we're about out of time, and I'd like to wrap it up by asking our audience to please give us a call or write to us at NCCI. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, and good night.